To make the saw, you will need two short pieces for the arms, one long piece for the stretcher that's a little bit thicker, some threader rod with a uh, wing nut, two D60 nails, and a saw plate. And lastly, some nails and screws big enough to withstand the tension of the saw. <laughs> Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this Chinese woodworking frame saw. Now I got the idea for this frame saw by watching a Chinese master make a saw very similar to this one. So if you're interested in watching his videos, go ahead and follow the link in the description. There are two main differences between, say, a Chinese frame saw and a European one. The first is the way it's held. The Chinese frame saw is held with the hand over the pin like this, whereas the European has a handle. And the second difference is that the Chinese frame saw, the blade, and the frame itself is almost always at a 45 degree angle. Whereas the European version, the blade and the frame itself is almost always used along the same plane. But besides that, the two saws are actually very similar, nearly identical. So this is tool number two of seven different Chinese woodworking tools that I wanted to make. The first one was a plane, and if you're interested in making a Chinese woodworking plane, go ahead and follow the link in the description. So let's go ahead and get started making this one. I first determine the thickness of the arm pieces and then transfer that onto the, the frame or the stretcher piece. Then I determine the depth I need for the bridle joint and I transfer that all the way around. And if the piece of wood is not square, these lines will not line up. Cutting with the Chinese frame saw is very similar to cutting with the western saw. I start by following the line on the top and I would check the reflection to make sure that it is at 90 degrees. And then once I get the top started, I will drop my hand slowly and then until I go down and follow the line along the vertical face. And then I would flip the piece over and use the uh, vertical line, the reflection, as well as the groove made on the other side as a guide to finish the cut. One of the keys to cutting well with a saw is to let the weight of the saw do the cutting. Once the cutting is finished, it is just a matter of cleaning out the bridle joint. So one thing I need to check here is if there's any twists in the frame. So I've exaggerated, exaggerated these short pieces. So if there are any twists, you would get magnified. And really it's hard to say. I think it's pretty square right now. The alignment is pretty good. On the short arm pieces, I'm marking the pin and or blade side of it about one inch from the edge. And on the threader rod side, I'm marking it about uh, three quarters of an inch from the edge. I then use the gauge to mark the four centers on each of the short pieces. This will tell me exactly where I need to drill. I've clamped the two arm pieces together so that I can drill on the short side. I start about halfway on one side, then flip it over and drill from the other side. I've used this bit for about four years, so it had a good run. So I've got the two short pieces here. Um, this one side of the short piece is completely um, shaded, so you can see this is the shape that I want to create. The middle four inches or so. Uh, there's nothing cut from the inside. This is where the um, this piece is going to fit into. So that part's going to be flat, and then it can slide up and down here. Um, the only thing I'm going to show you is how to gauge and design your handle. So the Chinese saw is held like this, and there is going to be uh, the D60 nail we're going to use going to stick through here. Okay. And when I first made this, I made this handle a bit smaller than I like it, so I had to wrap it up a bit. I'm just going to Take a French curve um, and sort of draw this out with you. Imagine there's a the blade is gonna be here and my hand's gonna be holding onto it like this.
to estimate how much uh, of the nail I will need to cut off. And it turns out to be about three inches on the side with, my, with the handle and about two inches long on the opposite side. And this may vary depending uh, on how you want to design your saw. But I think three and two inches will work for most saws. The D60 nails are slightly oval in shape, so I had to round them out before I could use it. To cut the slot in the pin, I first marked it, and then I cut the line with a cutting wheel, uh, as much of it as I can, before finishing off the job with a hacksaw. I then flattened out one of the sides to make drilling a little easier. I also made this little jig that I could use to hold the nail. Drilling the hole for the saw retaining pin can be a little tricky. My advice is to go slow, use a drill, not a drill press, use lots of WD-40 and take your time. I think you're going to like the result. After removing the burr, I had to do just a little bit more finagling to get the pin to fit flush into the arm. The tensioning rod is made from a piece of threader rod that has the tip of it bent and cut off and shaped so that it would fit inside the short pieces. The alternative is to just put a nut at the end and not bend it. But I think bending it and putting it into the recess of the saw makes the saw look a little bit more sleek. I use sanders, rasps, files, scrapers, whatever I can find to shape the handle and the short pieces to the way I like it. I would uh, recommend though to pay special attention to the handle. Shape it slowly, uh, grasp it to see how you like it, make sure that it feels good in your hand. And then I finished it with 320 grit sandpaper. Oh yes, and don't forget to break all the sharp corners because this is going to be in your hand and you want it to feel good. The last thing to fit is the blade. If you made your own blade like I did, you have to first trim it down to the right size before you can uh, drill the hole for the retaining pin. To determine the position of the retaining pin, I first made sure that the frame itself was nice and square, and then I inserted my blade to the position I want it to be. I then double checked to make sure that the frame is square, and then marked the position of the uh, retaining pin with a pen, and did the same thing on the other side. Then I'm going to move the mark from both ends in about one eighth of an inch. This is to ensure that as the different parts of the saw marry together, that the blade doesn't become too loose. After marking the center, I drilled out the hole using the same drill bit I've used to drill all the metal parts. Once the final hole is drilled and all the burrs have been removed, it's time to assemble the saw for the first time. Sounds a little loose. Sounds much better. From the sound you can tell that the saw is under a great amount of tension. So it is important to select a saw retaining pin that is strong enough to withstand that tension. Notice the weak pin that's being broken in the lower right hand corner. Just one more reason to always wear safety glasses. The finish I'm using is beeswax. Uh, this is the way that the Chinese master showed in his videos how he did it. He heated up some wax with a heat gun and then wiped it on with a rag. I was skeptical of this idea at first, but after trying it, I have to say I really like it. After buffing the wax, the surface should feel super smooth. If it feels like wax paper, then there's still a little too much wax on the surface. This technique really saves a lot of time. I'm skipping over the application of linseed oil. That's going to save me a couple of days. And the result is very striking. In this test cut, I've replaced the weak pins with very strong pins. And the saw works unbelievably well. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this project. I can say that this is definitely the best saw I've ever used. And it's incredible how well and how easy this saw cuts. And the ergonomics of this saw is just absolutely fantastic. If you do try to make one, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Just do it safely and make sure all the parts are strong enough to withstand the tension. So thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.